Hi, everyone. We are starting our next installment of Meet Your Case Manager. And already I can see everybody saying hi. Would you all do me a favor and just let me know what country you guys are tuning in from today? We've got a really big crowd. CJ's told me that we have over 2,100 attendees today, which is, I think, probably our biggest one yet. We're really excited. We have uh, different presenters with us today, which is really exciting. We absolutely wanted to introduce different members of our team. So we'd like to welcome Alicia Johnson. Alicia, can you wait? She's one of our new senior case managers. As a matter of fact, she was our global senior case manager, which is amazing. She is now our connection between the United States and the Philippine team. And we'll talk about our Philippine team a little bit later on. So thanks for being with us today. It looks like we have, I saw Ghana, Kuwait, Gambia, Zimbabwe, Jordan. My gosh, that almost brings a tear to my eye. Liberia, that's fabulous. Welcome everybody. We're so excited you're here. So I'll turn the time over to Alicia. She's gonna be our first presenter today. Thanks, Alicia. Hello everyone. Um, you know, with the post-COVID world, we wish things happened faster, but we need to be aware of that the immigration timeline may take longer than usual, you know, especially with the social security cards. You know, pre-COVID, people would get their socials after U.S. arrival, typically around the two to three mark, but now that average wait time is now around four to six weeks. That's the average. Sometimes it could happen faster, but that's kind of where we see people kind of fall. So my next slide is savings. I cannot stress to you the importance of bringing adequate savings with you to the US. Um, depending on the state where you're working, you may not be able to work on your license until after you receive that social. So, you know, that four to six weeks and then you work on your social, that's time that you won't be working. So it's very, very important to bring adequate savings with you to the US. You will still need to have a way to support yourself until you start working. Yeah, I'm just gonna hop on for a couple seconds and agree with that. It's it's a big question we get asked. Thanks CJ for hopping back. Savings is a big question. How much do I save? What is enough? I would say the sooner you can start saving and absolutely the most you can save is, is your best option. And as far as Alicia talking about the wait times before with our social security and green cards. It's been a little bit longer lately. It's been anywhere from about four to six weeks. So when your case manager says, don't worry, we're gonna keep our eyes open. It'll come to our office. Please be aware that your case manager is going to reach out, let you know once it gets to the office. And yes, indeed, it really is four to six weeks at the moment. And I'll take this next slide. Good morning, everybody. I am Kimberly Cole. I am the Director of Case Management over the Nurse Aids. A few of you have may have seen me before on previous webinars, but I'm excited to be here again today. So with talking with savings, you know, your employer pays for your immigration process, but there are a few things that you'll be responsible for during the immigration process, such as your medical exam. Now, depending on where you are, it could be anywhere from equivalent to 200 to 500 uh, US dollars. So please utilize this time to save as much money, not only for your arrival to the US, but for those fees that you may encounter during the immigration process. The medical exam, once you complete your immigration process, the USCIS immigrant fee, which is your green card fee, that is $220, which you are responsible for yourself and then any dependents that you have coming with you. Um, same with the medical exam. So it's for yourself and any dependents that are arriving to the US with you. When it's time to book your flight, WWHSS will book your flight to your facility location, one way flight, but if you have any dependents, please be aware that you are responsible for booking and paying their flight. Right now, flights are anywhere from like seven hundred, you know, nine hundred dollars to fourteen hundred dollars. 
So I understand that is a lot of money, but please utilize this time during your immigration process to save as much money as you can. We recommend saving from anywhere between $3,000 to $5,000 for your arrival. And if it need dependents, come in an additional $500 to $1,000. That just helps. So when you arrive, you're not going to be starting right away because you've got to wait for your social, licensure if applicable. Things like that can delay your start date. So saving as much money as you can will help make sure that you are comfortable to, to wait until you can receive your first paycheck. Um, with the timeline of the immigration process, you know, it, it can take approximately two years. It just depends right now, the USCIS, the NBC, the Department of Labor, they're, they're still kind of working on COVID timelines. They're delayed in their processing times. So utilize that time to work on saving your money, working on your visa screen, things that are needed um, for you. Now with nurse aides, you don't need visa screen. So that's a good thing for you. You don't have to worry about that, but still utilize this time to save as much money as you can. Now, some of the things that you do pay for during the process, are reimbursable, I would suggest review your offer letter because each employer reimburses different items. But I would suggest don't use that reimbursement as a means to support yourself. Save, save, save as much money as you can so that when you get your reimbursement, it's actually a true reimbursement of what um, expenses you accrued during the process. So once you begin working, then we will have a reimbursement form for you to fill out, which you'll do so, send it back with your receipts, and we'll be able to process it. Thanks, Kim. As far as reimbursements go, we've had just a little bit of a shift. We had Miss Vanessa, a lot of you have worked with Miss Vanessa on your reimbursements. And now we are really excited that we have a dedicated reimbursement specialist with our relocation team, which again is our, our fantastic team that works with all of our transition, our travel, our preparation to the U.S. You know, Kim briefly touched on how our immigration timelines as well are a little bit longer than what we would like. This is a really big question we're getting asked now, I apologize, I forgot, I'm Marlo Bench. I'm over the RN team. I'm director for RN case management. And Kim, of course, is representing nurse aides. So my next question is how many of you are RNs and how many nurse aides? Throw that in the chat. We'd love to know uh, how many of each we have tuning in today. So it's been a, a cause for concern. Why are these timelines so long at the moment? And I think as case managers, we'd love to give you the perfect answer. All we know is that there are significant backlogs with these government agencies and there are concerns that something's gone wrong with the petition or perhaps maybe a case manager or perhaps a legal team has mismanaged something or something's been missed. And I'm going to let you know that it, that's probably not the case at all. We are taking really good care of you. It's just we're all working waiting on the government agencies to be able to do their part of the process. And whenever there's a backlog, we just have to wait on them to be able to work their way through that. We're kind of all on the same timeline. We're all at the mercy of, of them being able to work through all of these significant backlogs. But as soon as anything changes and we know that those timelines are shortened and things are moving along, we will and your case manager will let you know right away. So. It's important to stay connected with your relocation specialist when you're getting ready to uh, start moving and you've got your savings set aside. And as Kim had mentioned, you know, if we have a bit of a delay, please use that time to be putting your money aside. Just make sure that you are consistently reaching out to your specialist. They will reach out. They'll introduce themselves to you. They're going to be the best person to touch base with on your reimbursements your orientation dates, your any kind of transition or travel questions that you might have. They're also going to have uh, a specialist to help you with any licensure inquiries that you might have. So they're really an important person. You want to reach out to them towards the end of your process. 
but also it's important to remember your case manager is still really heavily involved so don't forget your case manager is always there with you to help with all of those questions and concerns as well so a next hot topic and i have with me carrie cooper on our webinar today and everybody knows carrie cooper well she's super famous she is our phenomenal esl uh, extraordinary uh, instructor teacher language specialist we know her by many different names we have had recent developments through cgfns that the pte exam is now going to be accepted uh, towards licensure as well as towards our visa screen. And Kim had mentioned if you're a nurse aide, not to worry, you don't need the visa screen. But all of my RNs out there, everybody knows you need your visa screen in order to be able to finish the process and pass your embassy interview and immigrate to the U.S. And it's been a really exciting sometimes controversial update because the PTE isn't necessarily accepted with all states, but it is a, an easier exam to pass. And you know what? I'm going to let Carrie go into more detail on that one <laughs> on this next slide. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you so much, Marlo. Uh, again, I'm Carrie Cooper. I'm the ESL program coordinator for uh, Worldwide, and I'm super excited to be here today. I love seeing all the different places in the chat. I did see a couple of Canadians pop on there, Marlo. So, <laughs> her home country, I know she loves to see it. So, let me talk to you guys about the PTE a little bit. Uh, first, I want to talk about the test and the test format and how it is just drastically different from the IELTS and the TOEFL. For those of you who have taken the IELTS and TOEFL, the PTE is so different. Uh, it's two hours long and it's a single test session. So you will be speaking into a microphone and recording yourself speaking, which is similar to what the TOEFL does, but the speaking and listening or speaking and writing portion are um, all done together. They're all done in one portion. Uh, the speaking and writing is 54 to 67 minutes long, so that varies a little bit. Then you'll be tested in your reading, which is about 30 minutes long. And then finally, you'll be tested in your listening, which is 30 to 43 minutes long. But the test is computer-based. It's taken in a test center. Uh, it assesses what they call real-life English. Um, as you saw on the previous slide, it stands for Pearson Test of English. So Pearson is the name of the company that's created the test. Uh, the biggest change that everyone wants to see and wants to hear and that I'm getting emails and case managers are getting emails is, will my state accept the PTE? So excellent question. Uh, that does vary based on whether you're applying for licensure through examination or licensure through endorsement. Currently, there are 17 states that accept, and those are the 17 states that you see on this slide in front of you, that accept the PTE that's licensure through examination. Uh, there are 15 states that accept the PTE for licensure through endorsement, but I do want to add a little caveat to that, a little side note, is that as far as endorsement, there are other states that just require that CES report or your CGFNS visa screen. Um, and if you can, you can take the PTE for that since CGFNS has kind of opened that umbrella of accepted tests. But as always, before taking any test, I don't care if it's the IELTS, the TOEFL, the PTE, the TOEIC, whatever English test you're going to take, please check with your case manager first before signing up because that is an expensive, expensive test to take. And I would hate to see someone waste money on a test that is not accepted by their state's board of nursing. Um, but the PTE is great. It is becoming more widely accepted. And if you have questions, like I said, please reach out to your case manager. You can also reach out to me if you have test specific questions about how it differs from your exams. Um, I'm very, very, very excited to announce that the PTE is also being accepted in our nurses promo, which ends next week. Can we believe it? We are already approaching the end of September. Holy smokes, people, this year is flying by. Uh, the promo started on July 1st, 
and it will end September 30th. And it's for the IELTS, the TOEFL, and the PTE. So if you are an RN and you have passed your English exam and you have submitted your English exam scores to your case manager, that's key. Please submit your scores to your case manager. Feel free to copy me on that as well because I would love to congratulate you. But every nurse with a signed offer and you have passed your English exam will be entered into a drawing to win $500. And listening to what Alicia and Kimberly and Marlo just said, $500 could be really, really beneficial to the next phase of what comes after your English exam. So one lucky nurse will be picked to win $500. Um, I can't wait to see who it is. And please continue to reach out with uh, any exam questions. Continue to be in contact with your amazing case managers. Uh, and at, with all of that being said, I'm going to turn it over back to Marlo. Thanks, Carrie. We are so glad that you're part of the team. I don't know what we did without you before you came. And uh, yeah, the, the PTE has been a really beneficial, exciting update and change. And I'm glad that it has been um, such a good addition for a lot of our nurses. It's made it possible for them to really pass that English exam. And anytime anybody needs to set up a session, Ms. Carey has several resources and lots of Google Classrooms. And please don't hesitate to connect with your case manager if you need to get in touch with Carey and she will be right there for you. So we have an exciting development and announcement. We have a new worldwide team in the Philippines. Just like we have our global case manager, Alicia, we have our new Philippines team. They are, as you can see by their very smiley faces, they're a truly tremendous group of people. I've been really fortunate over the last couple of weeks to have been able to be in the Philippines, to meet with this team, to sit down and and go through you know, the processes and train with them. And they absolutely have an excitement and a passion for case management. This is the RN team. And as you can see, it's rather extensive. We have eight case managers. We have Anna Mae and Lovelyn and Lency and Irma, Rennell, Vincent, Dexter, and Mark. <clears throat> and they are there to help you with any questions that you might have. So all of our our folks that are located in the Philippines, please don't hesitate to reach out to those case managers. They'll be connecting with you, I'm pretty sure, quite shortly. They take over the phase one part of the process. So they're going to be reaching out to you once your offer has been extended to you and it's been accepted and they are gonna launch you on the beginning part of your journey. And so what better way to start your journey than with your Philippine team? and the U.S. team and the Philippine team are, are connected. We communicate all the time. And it again, it's just been such a joy to have them now part of, of Worldwide. So I'll turn it over to Kim. She's going to kick off our other teams that are now joined in the Philippines. Yes, our Philippines team has grown so big, so quick. We have a non-NCLEX team. So if you were hired as a non-NCLEX candidate. You probably have started working with either Gerald, Chrissia, Giselle, and Rochelle. So they are wonderful um, people. So get to know them. They are here to assist you. Feel free to reach out to them anytime if they are your case manager. Now for our nurse aides, you may have been assigned to one of our new nurse aid Philippine case managers. We have Joe Neal, who also goes by Neil. We have Noel and Noe, Madela and Anna Isabel. So these are wonderful people. They are on my team. So, you know, of course I'm gonna speak highly of them, but I, you know, speak highly of all of our Philippine case managers. They work very hard to support you, to get you through the process, to get you through your NCLEX, get you through the immigration process. So please, please utilize your case manager um, to assist you with the process with any questions that you have. They're gonna be able to keep you updated throughout every step of the process throughout it. Now, this doesn't mean that your current case manager, if they're a US case manager, is no longer your case manager. That's not what this means. We just wanna introduce and share our new case managers in the Philippines. But, you know, as of right now, your case manager, you know, if they're a US case manager, is still your case manager. So 
Um, still utilize them, still reach out to them with any questions that you have. I know there's a lot of questions in the chat about your specific case. Please reach out to your case manager on that. They'll be able to better direct you about your case. Thanks, Kim. And on our chat today, we have uh, one of our associate directors, Christian Angiano, who is over our Idaho office. So he has been kind enough to be responding in our chat function today as well. Thank you again, everybody, for attending our webinar today. And as always, if any questions come up from the discussions from today, please reach out to your case manager. But I'll turn the time over to our amazing CJ. All right. Thanks, Marlo. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I am CJ Campos, and I'll be the one to help you with our Q&A session. So thank you so much for attending our webinar. Thank you to all of 2,223 uh, participants today. So I'm really excited for this webinar. So we're start. Uh, we're going to start and read some questions from the chat. And if you have not um, uh, put your questions in the chat, you can um, um, just throw in some questions and we will try to answer them all. All right, so first question, will you offer a green card to the spouse and does the spouse also get SSN? Yep, I'll hop on that one. Absolutely. If you're dependent on the petition, so that means if you have a spouse and also if you have children, those are considered dependents, right? It's going to be a spouse and your children, not <clears throat> a mother or father. That's a big question we get asked, or brother or sister. But yes, if they are listed as a dependent on your petition, they will indeed receive their green card, receive a social security card, they receive all the same uh, uh, residency benefits that you do as well. That's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, just a follow up question for that. Um, here's a question like, do I have to pay for SSN fee upon arrival in the United States? <laughs> no, there is no fee for the social security card. So once you arrive to the U.S., it should trigger to be issued. Now, if there is a big delay and when we receive it outside of the normal processing time, we do advise you to contact your case manager and they can direct you on next steps to obtain your Social Security number. But there is no fee for it. Thank you. And, oh. Yeah. And as part of, sorry, sorry CJ, it's a, again, another no big worries. question. We get asked about the Social Security card is, do I have to make an application? and you don't have to apply for your social security card. For those of you that are far enough along in the process and have made it to the DS-260 stage where you go online and fill out that online application, there at the end of that application are the questions again that ask, do you want a social security card and do you want to move forward with that process? And, and by completing that portion of that online application, that then, as Kim says, triggers once you cross at your point of entry and immigrate, that information is all uploaded and um, the social security office and government agencies are made aware that to move forward with that process. But again, sometimes there are delays. So if you're waiting two or three weeks and you're a little bit concerned, please reach out to your case manager. They'll direct you on how to move forward with that, whether you need to go to your local social security office to investigate that further. Sorry, CJ. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank you. So no worries. And next, next question, are we allowed to travel and visit relatives in the United States while our SSN is not yet issued? Yes, um, our attorneys advise that while um, to come to the U.S., you would have to have a, what is it called, a visitor's visa, a travel visa. Um, that is a non-immigrant intent visa, and your petition is an immigrant intent visa. So you would have two conflicting visas happening at the same time. Our attorneys advise to not visit the U.S. while you're undergoing the immigration process. So um, those visas don't conflict each other, and it can throw up red flags when you go through customs. So we don't advise it. I'll add a little bit onto that question in case uh, we have some people wondering 
once they've immigrated and they're waiting for their social security card to kick in, can you go and visit other family members in the U.S.? I'm going to say that's really dependent upon your employer. So um, your relocation specialist, we mentioned them earlier on in the webinar, they are going to be your connection to ask all those questions to. Sometimes, according to your employer, it might be okay to take a week or two and go visit some family in the U.S. while you're waiting to get your social, which then might be connected to a licensure requirement that you have. So please, again, ask your case manager and your relocation specialist. Um, I don't have it dependent for now, but can I apply them once I am stable in the United States? I love all these attorney questions. I wish we were all attorneys. <laughs> yes, once you're in the United States, you can absolutely move forward with adding a dependent. Now, I'm not super knowledgeable on which application that would be. Kim, are you more well-versed in, in which visa they would need to start working on with that? So if they don't have any dependents coming with them through their current process on their employment, based visa, but then let's say they get married or have a child after they come to the U.S. and want to add them if they're not American citizens. They would petition them through a family-based pe um, petition, which is an F visa. Um, we are out of the picture at that point, so you'd be responsible of petitioning for the um, your dependents yourself or reaching out or hiring your own attorney to assist you with that. Okay, thank you so much. So next question is, um, I've seen a lot of questions about this one. So I think I'll be able to help help out. So the question is, what questions are asked at the embassy interview stage? So I just wanna share my experience because I did all the stages from uh, stages one. I mean, my wife did the state uh, all the stages from one to uh, final stage here in worldwide. So from the embassy interview, here are some questions that um, I heard from um, during the interview. So this is the questions for my wife. So how did you know about the job? Next one, salary rate. Next, when was the last time you communicate with your employer? What is your highest educational attainment, you graduated, when did you take your NCLEX exam, and is your license in the U.S. same in the state where you were you working when you arrived? And last one, are you vaccinated? So those are the questions for, um, the, for, for my wife during that time. And also, um, here's also a tip if you have a dependent. So these are the questions for me when we had the, the embassy interview. So first, when did you know each other? Next one, how long you you dated before getting married? Next one, how long have you been married? And when did you arrive in Oman? Because we did our M US embassy interview in Oman. And next one, what is your plan when you arrive in the United States? And the last one is also, are you vaccinated? So those are the questions that we had when we um, went to the U.S. Embassy in Oman. So I hope that will help all of you with, with your, I mean, anxiety with the questions that will, that will be asked during the interview. So um let's proceed to the next question and probably this will be the last question for today's webinar so the question is can i work part-time jobs while waiting for my nursing job in the united states i'm gonna ask him to help with this one as well as what i'm gonna say can you work part-time jobs so while you're waiting for licensure, and hopefully that's not a big wait because you're gonna have a licensure specialist that's gonna work with you prior to arriving in the US. So that process is already gonna be underway before you arrive. And, and oftentimes it can be done 
And if you're going to a state that requires a social security card for your licensure, that would probably be the last requirement that needs to be done. So you're really not going to wait more than about four weeks. But oftentimes your employer will let you uh, start working right away in a tech role, which is really great. So as far as can you work part time jobs somewhere else, you won't need to. There won't be time to do that. And your current employer will most likely offer you again an RNT position or Kim can expound on, you know, when you're a nurse aide, what kind of positions are available. But but I hope that answers that question. Kim, thoughts on that? No, I think you answered great. You know, your green card is being sponsored by your employer. So you are expected to start working for them when you arrive to the U.S. Now, once you are in the U.S., I would say after you've been here for a while, you know, while you're fulfilling your contract, if you want to work part time at somewhere else, you can as long as it does not affect your contract. It does not inflect your work schedule with your employer. That should be your main focus to um, to complete your contract work for your employer since they did sponsor your immigration process and you agreed when you signed your offer to work for them for the length of time of your contract. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, if you have more questions, you can always um, reach out to your case manager. And for those who came in late, we will send out a webinar replay um, in your email within 24 hours. So thank you so much. And so back to you, Marlu. Thanks, CJ. I've, I've looked at some of the comments. We are really sorry that the connectivity has been poor for a lot of you. I can see in comments it's been tough to understand. So I'm really hoping the recording is going to work well for everyone. Our case managers are well versed in so many of the topics and the concerns that are going on right now. It's always the same advice we give you, but please, please reach out to your case manager and they will guide and direct you in the most appropriate way with, with you know, the best practices and really the best answer. And we have a whole series of teams all over the world now that you know, we've had a chance to introduce the Philippine to you, team to you a little bit. So please understand there are a lot of resources available to everyone. You have a relocation specialist, you have a licensure specialist, you have uh, our wonderful Carrie Cooper, our ESL coordinator, you have several different case managers, and we're all here to support you in this journey. We want you to succeed in this, and we are just as excited that, for you to accomplish this as you are for you and your family. So it's good to have you with us again. We're excited to have you. Um, I look forward to chatting with everybody again in our next installment next month. Until then, everybody take care and God bless.